Tonight we'll be in Ephesians 6, 12 and 13. Very uh, vital passage. <clears throat> I pray there'll be a sort of a breakthrough in this area because I've I've not been satisfied with the level of understanding that people possess about prayer and uh, even among ourselves. And there's, uh, I pray there'll be some kind of a breakthrough here on that sort of area. In our generation, the nature of spiritual life has not really been proclaimed very, very powerfully at all. In fact, very little at all. So that people have a very vague idea about what it is to be, quote, a Christian or spiritual life or live for God. It's all kind of a hazy area. Because of this, the, the necessity for a aggressive aggressiveness and stability and militancy, it's not understood. That's why there's been a significant reduction in all kind of direct activity that has to do with edification. It's like been, it's like been diminished, brought down, because people don't realize the nature of spiritual life cannot subsist in short, meager, and untimely exposures to truth. It, just forget that it can happen that way because it can't. That's all there is to it. Professing believers or Christians have proved very vulnerable to the devil. So that sin is common in almost every church of some, at some level. And even immoral things have, are, have grown kind of common. So we've got like a very weak kind of condition in our hand. I'm gonna, this text is going to explain why it's this way. <coughs> the devices of the devil, people are ignorant about them. And we're not uh, prepared to criticize them unduly be, because of this condition because there hasn't been a lot said, said about it. So we lay the fault at the, at the leader's this is serious business, brethren, when leaders of the church don't feed the flock. Amen. Mm -hmm. This can't be overlooked. Yeah. There's no satisfactory explanation for this. You want to know how God feels? You read back the prophets that didn't feed his people. What he said about it, said, I'm against them. Yeah, right. So I'm going to come right out and say this. I think God's against the majority of Christian ministers. Yeah. I know that's on recording, but I want it to be. And if anyone wants to inquire further in it, I think I can substantiate this very well. <clears throat> when it appears as though Satan is built more successful than Jesus is, <laughs> well, something's wrong. Something's opened the door for Satan's whore and his hordes. Something, some kind of environment has been produced where Satan can work more freely than God ever intended for him to work. We're going to address that. As a faithful minister, Paul's a touching on this subject. He's going to say, look, <laughs> don't be looking all around you all the time and at other people all the time and at circumstances all the time and at the nation all the time and the neighborhood all the time and the city all the time because there's something more involved than this. Amen. Don't get caught up in this. Amen. You don't think we should help people? Yes, but that's way down the list. He's informing the saints that there's a reason why God has provided the whole armor of God. And it's not because we're confronting men. Yeah. Amen. That's not why this armor is there. It's not so you can handle the circumstances of life. That's not why this armor has been given. 
I think sometimes they've been presented as though that's the case, but well, well, we'll see that that's not. Whether we're aware of the presence or not, there are forces with which we're grappling. Wrestling is called in scripture here. And if we're not wrestling, they're winning. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. You don't wrestle, they don't go home. Yeah. Being in the world is a wrestling match called if one of the uh, one of the uh, uh, participators isn't present, the match is called off. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. That's not the way this is here. Amen. We're talking about a wrestling match that if you don't turn up, you'll just be crushed. They're, they're not going to call a match off at all. If a person is spiritually obtuse and uninformed about these matters, he may be in the midst of spiritual warfare and he didn't even know it. Be right smack in a tremendous battle and doesn't even know it, not aware of it. Now a person who doesn't understand these things might look at Paul's thorn in the flesh <laughs> and say, well, it was a sickness of some kind. It was... But Paul said it was a messenger from Satan. That's what he said. I said that's what he said. So what physical, what difference does that make? He was grappling with spiritual powers. Now, for us to see this importance of the whole armor of God, Paul's going to tell us some more of what we're, what's, what we're up against. <laughs> and it's not circumstances. And it's not people. And it's not institutions. And it's not governments. That's not it. Here's his word, <coughs> Ephesians 6.12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Mark that down in your soul. Your opponents aren't flesh and blood. Even though you do have flesh and blood opponents, we understand. It says, in view of the whole armor of God. <clears throat> For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Amen. It's like I get, it, like this is a shout. <laughs> it's <laughs> This would be in capital letters if it was sent out. They don't like you an email to put capital letters because people don't like to be shouted at, but sometimes you do have to Amen. You have to shout. <clears throat> now there's that word for again. This is another one of these reasoning words. Other versions say because. He's going to identify the reason for putting on the whole armor of God. He just told you, put on the whole armor of God. So you can stand against the wiles of the devil for or because the wiles of the devil have to do with his methodologies and his intentions. We're not down to specifics there. His, we might say his plans or his objectives. Now, we're going to talk about how he carries them out. <clears throat> you don't have to have the whole armor of God if if the why, if you, you won't use the whole armor of God if the what he does in his wiles is unknown. How does Satan go about penetrating the hearts of people? He doesn't just stand on the sidelines and shout at them. He doesn't. No, he's. He tried to lure you out. I understand. We're, we're getting down now to another level. We're getting down to another level of details in Satan's strategy. He just, he just doesn't su make suggestions. He has fiery darts. That's not all he uses. 
But he has fiery darts, but don't think that's all, don't think that's the only way he has access to you. Don't think that for one moment. Even though he has permission, he has to get permission to do this, as is evidenced by Job and Peter. He has certain ways he carries out his wiles and his initiatives. It's understood that he operates under the constraints of divine will we don't, and that God's over him and God can say stop and so, but God can say go too. <laughs> he can say, Satan can say, look, I want to do him harm. God can say, okay, just don't take his life. Maybe he said that to Satan about you at some time. Maybe, maybe that's why you had such difficulty. See, so don't God's will is pretty, is wide enough. So you got to have armor to undertake this life. <clears throat> when he says we we wrestle, we wrestle. That's a reference to those all who have been reconciled to God. Not talking about the apostles; they're <laughs> part of the ones, but they're not just the only ones. If you look at this from the standpoint of of God, they're the they're the ones who've been reconciled to God, and they're the household of God, they're the house of God. And from God's personal point of view, these are the people that He chose. These are the people that He has begotten. These are the people He has put in the body of Christ. That's, that's the we we're talking about here now. <clears throat> From our standpoint, these are the ones who walk by uh, walk in the spirit and live by faith. That's the we we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. We're not even talking about haphazard people. We're not even talking about people lukewarm. We're not even talking about them. They got to get to the place where they can appropriate this stuff first, and they're presently in a place where this isn't what they need. What they need is a wake up and repent. Amen. We, it's important to see that. We, we must begin with God's definition of His people and then proceed from there to examine whether we fit into that. Definition. For instance, if Jesus says, "My sheep know me, and they follow my, and they hear my voice, and they follow me," that's which I thought. Now you've got to go start there, and determine whether you are a person who, in fact, is following Jesus and who does hear His voice. Amen. Okay. They know not a voice of a stranger, and a stranger they'll not follow. You got to take that. That's the bona fide. You've got to reason, am I one of those people or am I easily fooled? Or do I take off after every little rabbit trail? You, you have to, that's something you have to determine. I'm, I've determined for myself, just for me, that's all. We, we wrestle. Oh, that's a strong word. Some versions say struggle. So it's like a two and a back and forth type thing. Contending. Both parties, see, this is a thing where there's not going to be a tie. <laughs> In some sports, they allow for a tie. No no tie here. When the battle's over, one of the parties is won. Fight. <laughs> you know, when I was young and stupid, I used to like to fight. I hate to admit it, but I, that was the truth. I enjoyed a physical fight would go out of my way to find one, hurt somebody, and hurting me didn't bother me. But I am, well, you're going to fight. <laughs> now, you can't just uh, twirl around a couple of times and be casual about it. It's a, fighting is an aggressive thing. Fight. Some versions say battle. Some say contest. It's a contest to see who wins. Now, there is a perspective of life, a legitimate perspective of life, that focuses on your own effort <laughs> without regard to adversaries. Like running the race. See, all right, that's that. We understand that it's uphill and this sort of thing, but it's, it's 
running the races, you're not thinking about the adversary at that point. It's the goal you're thinking about. So there, there's this perspective. It's in Scripture. The activities in which you engage. We're working out our own salvation of fear and trembling. See, now this... You do have to do it in the context of adversaries, but that's not that's not the point of that of that verse. See, so that's the, these are all valid perspectives. You, you're looking at salvation from different perspectives. Another is to uh, perfect holiness in the fear of the Lord. See, this, in other words, this this has got to get done, adversary or not. This has got to get this has got to be done. And this is this is so. This is how you think. And growing in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, all of those things are difficult, but as if that was not difficult enough, <laughs> now Paul brings up something that greatly complicates the whole thing. Yeah. You're not the only ones. Uh -huh. You are facing foes that are aggressive and are going to attack. They're not just going to stand in the bushes someplace. Yeah. And you've got to prepare for their onslaught. Because if you don't, they'll win. Yeah. Now the Lord is able to keep her from falling, but not without the armor. Yeah, that's right. The Lord can make you stand, but not, not without the armor. God had the armor. So wrestling. Sometimes we must run in spiritual storms. Sometimes you get you're kind, of a, kind of a flat spiritual prairie and the sun is shining and the weather is cool and you can kind of make some progress very enjoyably. And it's not always that way. There's an evil day. And you have to keep, keep on going at those times. There's also the matter of our own natural weaknesses and ignorance, the compound matter of these things. But now Paul's addressing another aspect of spiritual life now. See, then that, then that work calls for personal effort and this sort of working out your salvation. That's one very valid aspect you've got to consider. Now here's another. He's going to throw this in to show you salvation is not as simple as some people have thought. We're wrestling, but not against flesh and blood. Some versions say not against human beings, or not against a human opponent, or not against human enemies, or not a people made of flesh with physical opponents. That's not, uh, well, if that's true, then we can't be people-centered. Yeah, amen. That's right. Hmm? Yeah. Our foes, some people get agitated what other people have done to them. Unplugged from that. Yeah. Some people talking about how they've been abused years after it happened. They're still talking about it. Yeah. Quit talking about it. Amen. Yeah. If Paul would have thought like this when he left the Thessalonians, he would he would have just stopped. He wouldn't have told right. the Bereans anything. He'd have thought, well, you know, they're, they're not going to receive it. But he didn't think like this. Yeah. He went right about preaching the gospel again, yeah. even though he'd just been chased out of one town. Our foes are not flesh and blood. Now it is true. Hananiah and Mishai, Mishael and Azariah had to face the aggression of Nebuchadnezzar. Yes. But their foe wasn't flesh and blood. Amen. And Daniel had to face the aggression of Darius, but his, the foe wasn't really flesh and blood. John the Baptist had to face Herod and on and on and on. You can go. And I'm going to be bold and say this. Facing those kind of enemies does not require the whole armor of God. Okay, maybe we can lit now because there's, there's some, something else involved simultaneously. The whole armor of God is not to protect you from men. It's not to protect you from people. It's not to ins insulate you from hurt from your peers. That's not what this armor is about. We know that because he's going he's to tell us, tell us why. <clears throat> now, frankly, this is a thought that I had not developed in my mind as thoroughly, I can see, as I should have. 
particularly like you take the reformers come out of Catholicism and Anglicanism and in their writings almost always they'd refer to that environment like a, in an inordinate way when you finally say to you said this is uh, too much reference this is our foes are not flesh and blood that helps to kind of get to strike it on an appropriate balance about those things. You can say Alexander the Covenant Smith did the most evil, but like you don't write that in every epistle. You don't dwell on it. Why? Because the our, the whole armor of God is suited for another aspect of life, not the opponent, not the opposition of men or the persecution of men. It's that's not what it's particularly tailored for. Even though you've got it on, I understand it will all be of assistance in those things, but I'm talking about the purpose for the armor. The four. He said four. Put on the whole armor of God. Four. We're not resting against flesh and blood. And it is, as I have said, possible for believers to be caught up in what men have done to them and disappointments they realize. I think... Probably this is kind of a common area of vulnerability. Uh, probably most people do have to wrestle with this, contend with this about dwelling too long on what's happened to you that men did, but you really, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. There's a difference between rebuking and wrestling. <laughs> I can rebuke someone that's causing me trouble. Hey, but these, what we're talking about, you don't rebuke, you wrestle. There's a big difference now between wrestling and rebuking. Some people think they can really talk their way out of about anything. But here's something we're talking about. You can't talk your way out of it. You're going to have to wrestle, combat. I'll be, be real clear about this. There's a real battle, a real battle is not with men. Men are really not trying to stop us from going to heaven. They can't think that. <laughs> and I don't think your worst enemy would tell you that. If you say, are you trying to stop me from going to heaven? I don't think you'd find someone that would say, yes, as a matter of fact, I am. But what we're talking about, we're talking about foes that that is what they're trying to do. So with that in mind, let's see. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Just not let our focus stay there. If you've got to consider it, consider it. If you've got to warn somebody to do it, but don't stay there. But against principalities, those I repeat, A against powers, A against the rules of the darkness of the world, A against spiritual wickedness in high places. <laughs> That means that they're launching the initiative. You say against, see. Now the Holy Spirit is accounting for the necessity of the whole armor of God. As I have said, and I say it cautiously, knowing that there are various ways to view this, as grievous as human opposition is, that is not a sufficient reason for the whole armor of God. We've got to have a deeper reason than that. Because there's some people face this kind of thing before the whole armor of God was available. What are you going to do with the Noahs and the, and the Lots? And the Ab See, they didn't have the whole armor of God available to them. So they faced uh, those sort of things. We're facing an aggressive enemy against, an aggressive enemy against the long-time occupants of the earth. And they consider you as invading their territory. And they're not about to give up. They're afraid of Jesus, but they aren't afraid of you. That's why you got to wrestle them. See, Jesus never did have to wrestle them. <laughs> he never did have to wrestle them. Because the fullness of the Godhead dwelt in him bodily, it doesn't in you. 
these, the sons of Sceva found out that having the right thing to say doesn't affect these opponents at all. These opponents will not yield to power that's inferior to them. They will not yield, for instance, to worldly wisdom. <laughs> oh, no, they won't yield to it. They won't yield to a fancy plan somebody came up with to advance the cause of Christ. Not these powers. They won't yield to that. The fact that we must wrestle against them means that they're not under us yet. It'll be, God's going to put a, Satan under our feet, but he hasn't yet. They're not subject to us yet. That's why you got to wrestle them. If you didn't have to wrestle, if they were under your feet and subject to you, all you'd have to do is speak a word and that ended. end it. But you've you got to wrestle. So they're not subject to us yet. By design. This is how God's designed this thing. This is another one of those areas where by divine intention, God filters out the people that aren't serious. You'll find there's a lot of, there's a lot of these points. Points where only the serious people, only the people who are trusting in the Lord with all their heart will take seriously what he says. All the others kind of drop off the vine. That's why these situations are there. This is on the way to glory. You've got to wrestle. <clears throat> and if you don't engage the enemy, they'll overcome you. That's, that's the way it is. If salvation did not prepare us to adequately face this battle, Well, that would be this would be an unreasonable demand put on the whole armor of God. If if God didn't equip you with something to con to adapt you for this kind of activity, wrestling. Now let's look at who we're wrestling against. Yeah. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, and if that enemy hunger feed him. Well, this, you're not wrestling against your enemy. You're not wrestling against him. See, you're, mm -hmm. you're anybody to feed him. See, mm -hmm. see, that'd be the opposite of wrestling. Mm -hmm. It'd be the difference. You're not, you're not doing, you're not seeking to do him harm. Mm -hmm. you, so you don't, you don't wrestle against your, pray for him. Right? Mm -hmm. By full of you is you. Well, the reason I ask is because he calls men are enemies in Romans 12. Well, it was, it was because of the work he was doing, not because of who they were. Your enemies, the enemies that Paul encountered were because of what he was doing. That's what, it, if he had just kept his mouth shut, they wouldn't have surfaced at all. But these enemies will. Yeah. And the key is in the wrestling part. Yeah, this doesn't mean we don't have enemies in the flesh. We we do, but we don't wrestle against them. So these principalities and powers they can employ men as well. They can what? Employ men. Or, well, they can or employ work men. men. Yeah, yeah. But you're not. We're not wrestling against men. Yeah, I understand. We but have enemies, and there's a certain conduct that it's expected of us, mm -hmm. but we're not wrestling against them. It's the powers that are driving. Now, because they they have no power to separate you from the love of God. Even if you give heed to them, they, but these do. These are powers. These are these are potent personalities. They can work devastating work on a person who doesn't fight back and resist. Go <laughs> or give themselves over. And areas of thought and deeds yeah. where they can be completely taken over yeah. by these wicked powers. Mm -hmm. Everybody, I trust tr tr you can see this that mm -hmm. we do have enemies, but we don't wrestle against the enemies. Jesus said we feed them and pray for them and this sort of thing, but we don't wrestle against them, we don't engage in personal combat with them. If we do, it's a casting down imaginations. It's not, it's not what we would call wrestling. 
<coughs> Principalities. These are rulers or authorities or empires or despotisms. A despotism is a system of government in which a ruler has unlimited power. So these principalities are over some kind of a domain. And a principality is the first of a series. He's the leader or the, the head. In this passage, this passage has to do with rank. This is the personality with power and authority to make things happen. He got a number of other personalities under him. If you want to talk about a, a holy principality, Michael and his angels, and he was over Israel. See, so he, that's a princip that's a principality. He's he's a the head, he's over others, and his will is implemented. And spiritually, there was Daniel, an angel told Daniel about a prince of Persia. That was a, it was a spiritual wicked host person, personality in the heavenlies that governed Persia, gave Persia its power, made Persia dominant. And this was such a powerful personality that the angels said he couldn't he couldn't overcome him. Michael had to come and help him. That's how potent this. And here we're we're wrestling again. <laughs> we're wrestling against. And then he's and that and then he delivered him, but then he said, When I go back, I'm gonna take up the fight again. And when we fight and overthrow this prince of Persia, then the prince of Greece is gonna come, and then Greece would become the dominant government in the world. Now we're wrestling against these kind of things, these kind of personalities. When a nation is dominated by iniquity, it's because of the, one of these principalities. If it's the USA and iniquity starts spreading, it's been superintended by this principality. The church is supposed to be wrestling against it. The decline that takes place is not just people getting worse and worse. People say, things are getting worse and worse, aren't they? I can't believe the things that are happening. See, that's, I mean, it sounds holy and all that, I understand. But it, this is the talk of an infant. This is the prattle of an infant. If Satan's work is expanding, one of his principalities has not been out-wrestled. We wrestle now against principalities. It is quite possible that a principality that's over, say, Burkina Faso will not be able to be overthrown just over there by them. Maybe someone over here will have to engage the battle. Yeah. We wrestle. Uh -huh. Doesn't just mean principalities in your area. Yeah. Principalities. If the church is getting worse and worse, then there's a principality over that there's not much restriction. <laughs> See? There hasn't been much wrestling against this principality. Now, the prince of Persia, he didn't leave easy. He wrestled for 21 days, and it wasn't over yet. So there's some principalities that don't yield even to angelic hosts. They don't yield for three weeks. Then it wasn't over yet. What? See, so, so you can imagine. See, the wrestling, this is like a prolonged activity. Yes, if we have a church on our hands that only deals with human problems and circumstances, these wicked rulers gain more power. The fetters are taken off of them to gain more, gain more power. Now, this could easily happen, brethren, to us. To when we pray, we almost exclusively focus on human relations and human conditions. It's not that you don't pray for those. Please get me right here. It's not that you don't pray for those. But that can't be our focus. 
And I don't think you'll find it that focus reflected in the prayers of Scripture. I think you'll find it pretty consistent. Don't forget to pray for... Whenever they say to pray that, that, their, that their work might succeed, what was the idea? Talk about focus here. I want to be careful. Go ahead. A good example of this wrestling be ever Adam, there wasn't another man on the face of the planet, yet he, he had to confront these kinds of... He had, he had to come against... Satan himself come against him. Right. And he, but he, now, he... He succumbed, but we're equipped to be able to yeah, wrestle. Yeah, he didn't have the armor. Yeah. Right. yeah, The armors are given to you by nature, right. which is all Adam had. What God gave him, what God gave him by nature. Principalities, all right, these are leading type. In other words, brother, we're just, just not contending with spiritual foot soldiers. Yeah. Yeah. It's not because we're humans or of the human race that God just gives us kind of the lower echelon of Satan's kingdom to wrestle again. No, we're at the top. You gotta, you have to wrestle the top, the top ones. We, let me be more specific. We have to wrestle the top ones. Principles, powers. Some versions say authorities are ruling forces. These are personalities who have the power or ability to do what they want. They can implement their will as they please, barring some kind of divinely imposed strength. They may even have a number of powers on, in their charge, but they have the ability to do what the prince of the power of the air designs and promotes. They can carry it out. And unless we are tapped into a power that's superior to theirs, there's no hope of surviving the conflict. That's why I said put on the whole armor. Now you got to put on the whole armor. Because the ones we're wrestling, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, and they aren't either. Powers. Now, when these powers come, if they're not met by a strong church, they just implement one thing after another. They have a power to start some new immoral trend. They have a power to promote some uh, like pornography. They have a power to make drugs prominent. They, they have this kind of power. So if you see this kind of thing breaking forth in our own fair city, these powers are not being restrained. The problem isn't that these things are surfacing. That's not the problem. The problem is the ones who caused them to surface have not been wrestled against. Yes? A new thought that I've been dying on me more lately is that these principalities and powers and Satan himself <laughs> are, continue to do what they have always done. That's right. Within whatever bounds that God puts That's on right. them, of course. But when when Jesus died and rose again, they they didn't stop what they were doing before. Mm -hmm. What the, the way that they were spoiled and plundered is that that we were given power Amen. to wrestle against them. And as you're saying, that's how they're hindered is by what God has given us. That's, that's right. how they were spoiled is that that we can stop them or they, they can't affect us because we're equipped with the armor, which, mm -hmm. of course, we did not have prior to Christ. Amen. Now, back behind this, of course, is also the truth that God will not allow us to be tempted above what we're able to bear. So that you got to throw that into the scenario also, so they have a power to do what they want, but not where it, it goes beyond the will of God. That, but sometimes God raises the bar. Sometimes He lets Jerusalem be destroyed, <laughs> even though His name was put there. I see His name was put in Jerusalem, and He let it be destroyed and sacked. Now, more than once. Didn't stop these principalities and powers, powers. 
The wisdom of the world, see, is no match for these powers. Amen. They do not yield to humanly devised methodologies. They don't say, well, that 40 days on purpose is pretty successful. We better back off from that. Yeah. <laughs> they must laugh. Yeah. They must laugh. These poor weakly humans think that that's going to stop us. They think we, they, can they get our arm behind our back by 40 days of purpose or recovery program? Well, there are people that think they can. Yeah. They're just wrong, that's all. Yes. You said something just a little bit ago that I had never really thought of before, but it seemed really significant that, you know, it says here we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but you said they aren't either. Yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> and what, I don't know that we really think about it like that sometimes. Yeah. You know, and, and I don't know how this verse, if, if this verse applies, but the, the, the scripture that comes to my mind is the scripture that says that... Uh, uh, don't fear, don't fear him that can just yeah. take the body, yeah. but fear them that that can fear take him. The, and, and throw the throw the body and the soul in, in, the, in the Hades. Yeah. Fear him, yeah. fear him that yeah. can do that. Yeah, yeah. they can't do that. Mm -hmm. No, but they can, they can. But they're wrestling, they're wrestling against us for the purpose of. That's right. That. Mm -hmm. That's right. They're wrestling with our like our minds, mm -hmm. our souls. This sort of thing. It's, it's not our humanity that they're, that they're attacking. They know that they can corrupt men at their, at their core, yeah. then they've disqualified them. Yeah. And it makes them even more aggressive than yeah. they've got in us. But they're not just trying to make life miserable for, yeah. for us. E even in the case of Job, Satan's design wasn't just to make Job's life miserable. Yeah. His design was to show that he'd curse God. Yeah. See, that was his... <laughs> That was his objective. So Satan, Satan can make life miserable for you. We, we, we know that. But that's really not what he's targeting. Right, so the purpose, the purpose of them wrestling us is, is for them, for us to do the same thing. That's right. Would, would be to curse God. That's right. Mm -hmm. To diminish God in some way. To dishonor him. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Really can't wrestle against these principalities and powers. They're not. There's no contest when it comes to flesh and blood against these principalities and powers. But the spirit that is in us is stronger than these. Yes. And so this is, this is why, um, we're told to wrestle against these is because He's given us the ability to do it through the Spirit. Yes, right now this. The Holy Spirit is given unto us, but if we do not walk in the Spirit, it's questionable whether the Spirit is going to stay. Yeah. Yes? I have a question. Um, is, the, is the armor our power to fight? Our, the power that God gives us to fight, is that our armor? Well, I would call it the, the ability. Yeah, the ability. It makes us able. It makes us able to fight. Yeah, the power is God's power. So the power isn't like in the armor itself. The armor comes from God. The armor is supplied by God's power and makes us able to to contend with these otherwise superior forces. Yeah. Pardon? The power to fight would be in the sword. Would be yeah, the other sword. That's the only offensive weapon we got. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a sword. Brother Gibbon? Yes. Um, to a scripture that I found that um, to um, agree, I guess, with what Sister Maddie said is um, is found in First John 4, 4, where it says, yeah. ye, ye, are of God, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you yeah. than he that is in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. <clears throat> The powers against which we wrestle include their, their personalities that have power or authority in the world of iniquity. They have no power now in the spirit, holy, capital S, spirit. They have no power in the heavenly places we've been seated with Christ. They only have power in the world of iniquity. So if iniquity is spreading 
their power is enlarging. And the rulers of the darkness of this world, whew, The New Revised Standard Version says the cosmic powers of this present darkness, world rulers of this dark night, basic Bible, cosmic powers governing this darkness, Jerusalem Bible, powers that govern the world of darkness. Now, you've got to see that over above this, the highest governor is, is the Lord Jesus Christ, who is head over all. But underneath him, there's a kingdom of darkness. Jesus doesn't preside over the kingdom of darkness. Jesus controls it. Right? We're talking about presiding, implementing its objectives. But there are rulers, spiritual rulers, that preside over the world of darkness or ignorance or lack of understanding. It's so much so that if someone hears the powerful gospel doesn't understand it these powers the rulers right. take it away <laughs> the rulers of the darkness of this world they operate under their prince they promote ignorance misconceptions distortions spiritual blindness Moral and spiritual darkness is tailored for men. See, they take this world of darkness and they tailor it for men so they can live in darkness. When these things, these areas that are to do with darkness, when they're in a state of growth and enlargement, it's because just a few, if any, have wrestled against these rulers. And frequently we have prayed for our young people, you know, and for their upbringing. See, that's, that's a form, prayer is one of the yeah. weapons. That's a means of combating these powers of darkness. Is to seek for inroads to be shut off. That these uh, people work, these personalities work through. These are spirits that promote debilitating distractions. They're rulers. So what's he, perhaps some, you know someone that dropped off into sin and, and you marveled at the extent to which they went. You just couldn't believe that they'd ever do anything like that. All right, bring into your thinking the rulers of darkness. That's why. When you get into their domain, they are like omnipotent. We wrestle against these. Yes? I was thinking one way that we can wrestle to you is talking about prayer. It's important to pray for understanding. Mm -hmm. Because as you have more understanding, yeah. then you'll be able to wrestle better yeah. uh, and, and help others. Now again... We, we've mentioned this frequently in, this, in Ephesians, that the thrust is upon the body of Christ, not on the individual. Now, of course, the body of Christ can be no stronger than the individuals that, <laughs> that comprise it. I understand that. But he doesn't say you wrestle against. He says we wrestle against. This is like a collective, a collective endeavor. So that if throughout the world there were strong churches, they would have significant uh, uh, success in overthrowing these powers. And I'm not sure that this requires a lot of people. God sometimes acts because one person, you know. <laughs> you think of some of these rulers of darkness were like over Sodom. That's why it was the way it was. Rulers of the darkness of this world. So when you see things deteriorating, and you're prone to complain about it, and then we are discontent with it. We do not like it. But think of it in this term, in these terms. This is the rule effect of the rulers of the darkness of this world are having success, and we've, as the body of Christ, 
and members of it, we've been encouraged to neutralize their power, to neutralize their power by wrestling against them. Now he won't. He's going to spell out how he wrestled in, in identifying the armor. That's how he's going to spell out. It isn't a face-to-face -face type thing. It's an indirect battle, but he's going to spell out how to do it. It's rules of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. Some emphasize it's a spiritual host of wickedness, spiritual forces of evil. Uh, a staggering number of these forces exist that would be likened uh, to the armies of a ruling agent. We talk about rulers up here. Principalities, powers, rulers, the spirits of wickedness, these would be the, the footmen, so to speak, that carry out these, they, they would include demons, evil spirits, unclean spirits, and angels. These would be the ones that carried their, these things out. These spirits, we're told back in Moses, implemented idolatry. Hmm? Whoever sacrificed to idols sacrificed to demons. And Paul brings it up in 1 Corinthians 10. That was the spiritual weakness in high places were carrying out the intent of these principalities and powers and rulers in implementing idolatry. And to this day, some countries are dominated by idolatry, which is carried out by this spiritual wickedness who was under the rulers and powers and principalities who were under Satan. See, we're seeing Satan's kingdom has a hierarchy to it. <clears throat> These are forces against which those in Christ are to wrestle. And it's hard to define what wrestling means, so I'm not even going to try and do that. <clears throat> you should see the danger of always accenting the wickedness of men. That you, you can't ignore it. You don't ignore the wickedness of men. I understand that. But you can't, that can't be your accent. Your accent has got to be wrestle against who caused this, this wickedness. So there's a whole world of iniquity that's controlling sin within the greater framework of the will of God. Think of the a natural cosmos. <clears throat> we've got the world. We've got continents in the world. We've got nations within there. We've got regions within the nations. We've got cities. We've got families. I wouldn't doubt whether Satan has special forces over all of those areas. There's some kind of a prince that's over Joplin. There's a particularly wicked prince that's over like Hollywood, Los Angeles, and Chicago, and Las Vegas. You got to see it this way. There's regions, there's regions that Satan dominates. Sometimes there's, there's families that he dominates. So pronounced that God, he judges them only to the third and fourth generation. Otherwise, he just would have looked at somebody, somebody liquidated the Amalekites. Say, <laughs> there was no hope for them. They, one of these principalities was dominating them, see? And they were cut off completely. This transforms the way you look at things. When you look and say, oh, boy, that's a, whew, that's a bad environment. I don't know that I want to live there. Don't think of it that way. Think of it like, boy, Satan's really working freely there. There's a, seems to me like Satan is, is less restrained there than some other places I've been. At least where I'm at, he's not, it's not that free. That's about the, because someone's been wrestling. <laughs> that's why. Okay, now that you know who you're wrestling against, principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, <laughs> in view of this, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. See, there's a reason why we're moved to this decisive action. You gotta, you have to, there comes a point in your life when you have to make up your mind, I'm gonna put the armor on. You gotta reach that point first, yes. 
explain before you get too far into this. It says, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Does that last part Im imply the fact that we have already done all that we can to stand? And then taking the armor of God t to us is the ensuring that we do the yeah. stand? Yeah, if you, if you do all, you will stand. Because if we don't, if we you don't, don't do all, you won't. Yeah, if we don't, if, say it anyway, if you're not a hundred percent, you can't win. Yeah. If we don't put forth our effort that's to take right. the armor, then we won't. you say, what about the novice? Well, the novice may not know much, but he's putting out a hundred percent of effort. Yeah. He's still throwing himself into the work. It's just that he's handicapped, or he sees handicap because he hasn't grown up yet. But she's she, no matter where you're at in the kingdom of God, whether you're a novice or whether you're a, a gray-haired elder, you've got to give everything. And, and the more you grow, the more you get, the more you require to give. Now this, uh, put on the whole armor of God, although we don't do this because it's a commandment, although it is a commandment. <laughs> and we don't do this because it's a requirement, although it is a requirement. We do this because of who we're wrestling against. So if, if, who, if our opponents are vague, we'll have a vague idea about this armor and the necessity of it. Because he's going to be very specific now when he spells it out. He's going to really speak of specific things. And there are going to be things that not every believer has acquired. Which means they don't see this thing about the opponents. It's not, they're thinking too much of men instead of these opponents. Take unto you, see what God provides must be willingly and unhesitatingly appropriated. Amen. God gives grace, it's got to be. <laughs> God gives gifts, it be embraced and used. This is the, kind of the economy of the kingdom, how it works. Now in this world, men can give you something and people can throw it away. And still be friends, you know. Well, that's not the way it is with God. They got to do the whole armor, all of it. Not part of it. The full armor, some versions read, the full armor. All the arms, every piece of equipment. The panoply, that means the full armor. Every piece. See, we can't wrestle effectively if we're not wearing all the armor. I don't know that it is possible to wear a part of the armor. I'm, I'm not sure that's even possible, but if it was, you, you wouldn't do any good because Satan would head for the vulnerable part. If you had everything on but the helmet, if that was possible, I'm questioning if this is possible, but if, you, if that was possible, then he'd aim at your head. <laughs> that makes perfect sense to me. That you may be able, that strikes on what... Uh, Sister Mariah brought up that she may be able. That means the task set before us can be done. If we respond appropriately, we can stand. Amen. Withstand. The enablement of reference comes from the outside, it doesn't come from within comes from outside our persons and we appropriate it into our into our lives that's how all of the, all of God's gifts are that way they come from outside of yourself that's their, their source is outside of you but you've got to get it in you you know the um, the Israelites were given Canaan and God told them drive out the inhabitants now but it is written that there were some children of the inhabitants that were left in the land. This is 1 Kings 9.21. And because of that, they were not able to drive them out completely. <laughs> well, there's a very appropriate lesson there to learn about life in Christ. There's some things in our that were present in our 
former lives, what we, what we were. And all those things have to be driven out. If they're not, and some of them are retained, now comes the principalities and the powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and spirits weakness in high places. They take that little bitty remnant and they multiply it and pretty soon they gain the land again. Purge yourself from all filthiness. That's why it says that. Put away all. You know, they name put put away. Why should you put it away? So you'll be able to stand. You can't stand with the remnants of sin in your life. You can't stand. Amen. And there's full provision for complete forgiveness. See, you can go to bed tonight perfect. Amen. Just confess your sins. He's faithful just to forgive your sins. You're washed clean. You've got a clean slate. You'll have to do the same thing tomorrow now, too. Well, I understand that. But keep clean. Not only by not indulging in things that are defiling, but by cleansing your feet at all times. Whatever part of you touches the world, keep, keep it clean so you'll be able. <clears throat> you'll be able. Or you'll be fully equal to the task. Able to what? Withstand. That means this is something coming against you. Withstand. It's a satanic initiative launched it may be not as launched at you particularly, like it was Job. He launched it at a particular individual. But it may be an initiative launched against a region or a city or a nation or a, or the world. There are certain men, when they raise up, they promote under the administration of these principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of the world, they implement defiling practices and laws. Now it upsets us, and rightly so. But if you think for one minute that a president could implement a sinful law without the involvement of these principalities and powers and rulers of darkness of this world and, and spirits of wickedness on high places, think again. As unpopular as it might be, we've got a president through whom these powers can more easily work. And that's why he's having success. It isn't because the voters didn't vote. No. That may be a secondary, I understand a secondary cause down here, but the immediate cause is you've got an unarmed person who's not wrestling, who is captive by the devil himself, and so now he's able. Do you want to overthrow this type of person? We're not saying don't vote, do your voting, but that's not what's going to do it. Do some wrestling. Amen. We got something to wrestle about. Now it may be that Satan launches an initiative against a city like Tar Sardis. He launches an initiative against that city, and it's really bad. And pretty soon the, the church is dead. It's just dead there. But <laughs> the head of the church says to that city. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. These are wrestlers. <laughs> and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. See? So you may be in a region where, there's this, where some initiative has taken place. That doesn't mean it's going to roll over you. If you, if you wrestle, you know, God will protect his people, his remnant. He'll protect his people. But they have to wrestle. Right. They have to combat it. You may withstand in the evil day. That is a particular... <clears throat> We're not talking about an everyday climate here. This is a particular time when the vulnerability exists. And now then, here comes a sweep of iniquity in the year 1964. <laughs> we finally got out of some war, and the people were lax a days ago. And 
idea of communes and freedom and all this sort of thing, and here it come, boy. A tremendous wave from another country hit our shores, and the wave of it hasn't quit spreading. What was that? That was a satanic initiative that was carried out by some principality, some power. He found a beachhead, and he went to work. The evil day. Now, this can even be on a personal level. I understand this can be on a personal level when there's like an especial trial that, is, that assaults you, that you've got to stand against. But he, the emphasis here is something that's collective. <clears throat> Matter of fact, collectively, we can help one another personally. <laughs> right? Help one another personally. <clears throat> stand in the evil day. <coughs> that is when these powers are at the peak of their strength and they're, they're unleashed and they've got a lot of freedom. During that time, there, wasn't, there weren't ten people in the city. He ended up there's only one. He wrestled as hard as he could, but a guy got him out of there because he remembered Abraham, who did wrestle. And when he wrestled, he said to the Lord, if there's ten righteous, you know. Yeah. Having done all, having done everything, see, the person who is partially prepared is not prepared at all. And you face this army if all you've got is shoes. <laughs> if the only thing you've got is a helmet. If all you've got is a belt. Or maybe all you have is a sword. No, you've got to have the whole armor on. Amen. So you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Having the whole armor. If everything is not done, having done all. That is where he tells us about the belt and the shield and the helmet and the sword and the breastplate and each one of these had to be appropriated put on that's doing all if you've done all you'll stand firm now you've got God's pledge on this this is God's pledge it isn't if you do all you stand a better chance of standing no no if you put on the whole armor of God that's to initiate the process. Done all, you use it, you will stand. Amen. That's the divine commitment now. Having done all, to stand or keep your place. Yeah. Don't get, don't lose ground yeah. is the idea. During the Second World War, there were certain islands and beachheads that had been captured by the enemy and they were strategic areas and so they launched an initiative to recapture that island, Iwo Jima. Still got pictures of the man raising the flag up. A lot of lives were lost. But they were, they were regaining that territory so they could hold, and they determined to hold the ground. Now they're not going to let it go, so he's next time. Not going to let it go. That's what standing has to do with. Not not letting something that's, that you have get away from you. Not losing some of the progress you've made. Not becoming less sensitive than you were. Not becoming less diligent than you were before. Not becoming more ignorant than you were before. Standing has to do with standing firm so that, no, I'm, I'm not backing up. I'm not giving you any parcel of this land. Let's put it in words of scripture. That you be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. See that? There it is, spelled out in words. Or again, that no man, you talk about affliction. Peter was talking about afflictions, and he said that no man should be moved by these afflictions. So some of our uh, brethren and brethren that we know have experienced some afflictions. We're glad to report that most of the ones that we know, they weren't moved. They weren't moved by those afflictions. Why not? Well, some wrestling was involved. Somewhere some wrestling was, was involved because their circumstances were just not worldly circumstances. They weren't just earthly circumstances. The thing that jeopardized their souls was the activity 
of these principalities and powers and rulers and spirits of wickedness. It's their activity that jeopardizes our souls. But if people's if people are not in a proper spiritual posture, it like cracks the door for these principalities and powers, and they're invincible. Once they find a place to enter, they're invincible. When Jesus came here, if he hadn't come here, the Gadarene demoniac would have died, the Gadarene demoniac. That boy that threw himself in the fire, he'd have died that way if Jesus hadn't come. There had to be someone come to a stronger. There had to be a strong man had to come. And he established the beachhead. He gained the beachhead for us. He cast out all the things that were against us, and he gave us a clean slate, gave us access to heaven, and now he gives us gospel armor, whole armor of God, and he says, now put this on and stand. And while you're doing wait for my coming. I'm going to come again. Yeah. Well, that's a wonderful, wonderful picture. And it sets us up for the details now that's going to follow. I got the... <laughs> I was really fired up about seeing this. It just blessed my soul to kind of see behind the scenes how tremendous this battle is. That we've been honored to be called into this. Amen. See, God just doesn't call everybody into the battle. But to think that he's called you into a battle of this magnitude, well, this, uh, this, comments, this is a commentary on the effectiveness of what Christ did. Amen that he could now incorporate us into his army, call us to be good soldiers. Yeah. Any of you? Yes, sister. Uh, I was thinking of this stewardship of our, of our armor and how, like you had said, uh, perhaps the Lord might use, and I'm just saying like maybe Brother Michael and Brother Aaron may be used in, uh, whenever they go to Burkina Faso to wrestle against these That's powers. That's right. The Lord mm -hmm. may say, well done, thou good and yeah. faithful servant. I'll put you over five cities or yeah. ten cities. So I was thinking about how he tells us that. That might, that may be a way that, that or a reason he's telling us that, that how he puts us over different things. Uh, if we wrestle well, That's then right. we're allowed to be able to wrestle mm -hmm. in a wider environment. That's right. In a bigger now, environment. You think of this, you're going to spell out this armor. And when all this armor is on, you do wrestle. <laughs> if, in other words, these various traits with faith, hope, righteousness, all this, these various traits provoke you to wrestle. Otherwise, you can't really define what wrestling, <laughs> what it means. But they, they like uh, endow you with a this desire, first they give you a perception that there's an enemy against us, and then the, the desire to not let that enemy make further inroads. They may, they may have made significant inroads, like at Sardis. They may have made significant inroads. But here was a few names. They held their ground. And they kept their faith. And the Son of God recognized and said, I've seen it. Won't forget it. You're going to walk with me in white. For you're worthy. Amen. Anyone else tonight? Yes, Brother Aaron. Revelation 12 came to mind several times tonight where the, mm -hmm. the dragon came down and <laughs> yeah. he was wroth uh, with the woman mm -hmm. and also went to make war with the remnant of the yeah. woman's seed. Yeah. And two things <clears throat> were given as provisions to, to the woman. And to the remnant of her seed, one was to the wings of a great eagle yeah. to fly away and, and be at rest. At rest. Mm -hmm. And also the the earth helped the woman mm -hmm. and opened her mouth and swallowed mm -hmm. up the flood that was spewed out by mm -hmm. the dragon. And so our our fighting is not the only thing that's for us. Amen. Our, our struggling. See, mm -hmm. the, it's as though the the Lord determines how how long any given skirmish might be. Mm -hmm. so Amen. As, as we're wrestling and struggling, then we could at, at any time just fly away yeah. and, and be at rest, mm -hmm. or the earth could open up her mouth. Amen. Amen. 
Get the touch. I was considering this wrestling, and the Lord has given us these pictures, mm -hmm. um, and our brethren before time. Um, and I was thinking of King Hezekiah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whenever he was compassed about with King Sennacherib's army. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, how he he did things. He wrestled. He prayed. Yeah. He prayed for deliverance. He prepared the people. Mm -hmm. They had to get ready for battle. And he encouraged them. He gave them a word of encouragement. And in Amen. This, in this wrestling and his prayer to the Lord, the Lord, under, he undergirded the effort. And he mm -hmm. sent He sent an answer. And that was the destruction of the army. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is, this is what we do. We, there are things that we do to wrestle. We pray. Mm -hmm. We encourage one another by the words that we speak. We we, we carry ourselves mm -hmm. in such a manner yeah. that, that represents Christ. All of these mm -hmm. things help each other wrestle against these principalities and powers. Yes. Amen. Brother Judah? Yes, I'm thinking about what you said. <clears throat> you were speaking of we fight not against flesh and blood, but neither do the principalities and powers. They're not fighting against it either. Well, most people would think, well, then they're both unseen powers. So, so that makes them equal, doesn't it? Well, the answer is no. You can go, go to the text that says, Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And, excuse me. See that God, God is always superior, no matter yeah. what the circumstances. Yeah, if they were wrestling against flesh and blood, it wouldn't be any, any wrestling match. <laughs> yes, with it. This, this truth gives gives meaning to the scripture or gives more understanding, at least for me, in the scripture that says that the gospel is the power yeah. of God unto salvation. Yeah. That's right. Remember he said that Paul prayed it might have free course? Because that neutralizes the powers of these, yeah, these wicked powers. Yes? There's also wisdom in necessary on our part in carrying ourselves, as Sister Tasha was talking about, because there are these areas of stronghold. Mm -hmm. And some of them are physical, and some of them are spiritual. Mm -hmm. And so whenever we rise up and we are remaining with Christ in these heavenly places where mm -hmm. we were seated with Him, then it's like the skirmishes aren't as yeah. uh, mm -hmm. vehement. They're That's not right. as heavy upon us because mm -hmm. of where we choose to walk mm -hmm. in the spiritual realm. Amen. Amen. Yeah, there's never been a person that's ever fought that didn't win. You fight the good fight of faith, and you'll win. Yeah. If you put on the whole armor of God, you will stand. But this is the kind of confidence. You're not trusting in your own abilities. You're trusting in the power of His might. That the that, that God's going to keep His promise. Yeah. And so that this this you know, Paul didn't get discouraged when he got chased out of the the, the Thessalonica. He didn't he like like oh no, what am I going to do now? He knew who was what was behind the scenes. That's right. Oh, yeah. I was thinking about earlier you were talking about purging out the things you know in ourselves I was thinking about the, the types of uh, things that are make up the armor and you just don't put these kind of things on if, right. you, if you haven't purged out That's right. uh, things that you picked they up won't fit. In, right, and out in the religious environments where we've been we, you know, they teach you to think these certain things are okay and you know, like, but, you, yeah. but they make inroads yeah, this armor to a weak and frail, emaciated saint is like Saul's armor was to David. It just plain doesn't fit. But see, God, God is the great enabler. Amen. Yeah. Ministry. This was some time after the Lord established the beachhead, as you said, mm -hmm. according to what happens. And I saw Satan fall like lightning. Yes, right. And Amen. I've given yeah. you authority. That's right. Well, greater this, authority, see. This application of these things here is like giving us authority as well. Amen. Amen. We're because we're linked with him who has all authority. So Jesus has no trouble. He doesn't have to wrestle with the devil. <laughs> we do. But he gives us the he makes us able to do it. And when, when you, if you're sensitive, when you win one of these skirmishes, you'll know why. Yeah, that's right. Who was it had their hand up here? Sister Asha? Yeah, I was thinking, too, of, of being rooted and grounded. Yes. Rooted and grounded. If you 
um, a tree is constantly looking for sustenance, for water. Mm -hmm. And the, the deeper their roots, the stronger the, the part that seems will remain. So, so you have these, these gigantic trees that can withstand great, great blasts of wind. And it's because they're rooted in that. That's how the Amen. believer is against these principalities and powers. You, you're able to stand to the degree that you're rooted and grounded yeah. in the truth. See, the complexity of spiritual life is verified in the different ways it's approached. Running a race, fighting a fight, just standing against the wiles of the devil, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. These are all different perspectives of spiritual life, which tells you how complex spiritual life is. It's a complexity that is that God initiated because faith re requires this kind of environment. Yes, Brother Aaron? I'm just thinking that the, the wrestling is a sideline of living by faith. That's right. it doesn't, the Lord didn't say, uh, seek ye first to wrestle with the hand. All these right. things will be added to you. You seek That's first right. the kingdom, and then wrestling becomes one of the, mm -hmm. one of the avenues. That's yeah. right. That comes after you've appropriated the armor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Uh, several months ago at Aaron's house when Michael taught, he, he taught on that very thing where he talked about we... We don't go to fight, we go to walk. And and yeah. the Lord, you know, the, the fighting will come, mm -hmm. kind of like what you said, but we're not going to fight, we're walking. That's right. Amen. Yeah, that's why he says, in the evil day. See, that says that this is not like a 100% all the time threat. There are special times of threat. To individuals, to regions, to the world. Now there's a there's a climate of war afoot in the world. I don't question some principality that's over like war. You know, some angels are over fire, some angels over water. Well, some of these principalities may be over war, so they can the climate gets right. See, the climate gets right, and is not resting against them. Then you could have like a world war. Yes. In, in, in fighting, we always have to be prepared to fight. We can't just leave our armor, you know, off because yes, we're, right. we're not, you know, it's not evil day. Amen. Amen. All right, we'll have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the this exhortation, for alerting us to the foes against which we wrestle. And we thank Thee for the whole armor that You provide us in Christ Jesus. Now we pray for grace to put the armor on and to fight the good fight of faith. In Jesus' name, amen.